Alex was always gay. Or I should say bi, because unlike Zoe, Alex, and Fiona, who were never straight to begin with, he was into boys and girls. More along the lines of Imogen or Paige, he was more into people rather than a specific sex or gender as he found. Like Paige and Imogen seem, I think it's likely that he wasn't intended to be into the same sex. But also like with them, the way it came out worked well with his character that was already established. By the time that he and Tristan were even a possibility, we'd already seen him in two relationships, both with girls. As I've mentioned before, his relationship with Zoe was more a romance of the moment. He was down for whatever, or whoever asked nicely, as he put it. Oh, so you just make it with whoever? Whoever asked nicely. Zoe wanted him, and he just wanted fun. Tristan did kiss him in Paris, but it's unclear how Miles felt about it. Watching back, he seemed surprised, but not really looking for anything more. Possibly because he knew that there was someone he wanted more, and it wasn't Zoe or Tristan, but said person didn't seem interested at the time. Eventually, he did get together with Maya, and he seemed to truly care about her and their relationship. Trouble was, he also was consumed by the constant war with his dad, doing everything he could to at once be the son his dad wanted him to be and the son Mr. Hollingsworth made him out to be, trying to make him proud while also rebelling against him at every point. It consumed him to the point where he couldn't have a functional relationship. He ended up pushing her away because of this obsession. It wasn't that Miles wasn't actually into Maya. It was his home life and toxic relationship with his father on top of feeling hopeless to change any of it that ended their romance. And then, as he was trying to move on from Maya, he found a connection with Tristan. They were already decent friends at that point, and he enjoyed being around Tristan, and Tristan was still into Miles. In a different lighting, you could say that Miles' attraction to Tristan was the same to how Zoe felt for Zig and Drew, but I don't think that's so with how the situation was presented. There's a strong sense that Miles was down for whatever when he made out with Tristan for the first time, but it was also in a way that suggests that there was something more. That Miles was discovering romantic feelings for him as they bonded over their shared love failures of the semester. That Miles was down for something more with Tristan because he was actually feeling something with him too. It's important to note that there didn't seem to be ulterior motives behind dating Tristan. Miles was perfectly fine with keeping their relationship a secret and just wanted to be around his new amour. The romance was only revealed when Mr. Hollingsworth backed Miles into a corner over being late for a family photo session. Unlike how it seemed, he wasn't using his new relationship to get back at his dad, but his problems with his dad and family would ultimately destroy their first attempt at being boyfriends. Like with Maya, his inability to escape the escalating tensions and literal abuse consumed Miles to the point that nothing else mattered, not even how he felt for Tristan. Although he had a heart-to-heart -heart with Maya and Tristan thought his staring at her from across the hall meant that Miles wasn't over her, I don't think that's the case. To me, I think he was just latching on to the person who seemed to get him and his situation best, who understood what was happening and not trying to attribute Miles' behavior to marijuana. It's actually a habit of his to seek refuge in people he feels he can count on in the moment. We see this in next class with his reliance on Esme and also with Tristan. It's not proof of romantic or sexual desire with Miles, just a sign of how trustworthy a person is to him. Side note, I find it interesting how rarely the person he turns to is Winston. Especially early on, their best friendship seems to be one of inertia. They've always been around each other, so it was just natural to stay that way, regardless of how many times Winston clearly didn't understand Miles and what he was going through, or how rarely the person Miles relied on for emotional support was Winston himself. The relationship improved dramatically by the end of next class, but that may have been more because Miles was just more mature and in a better place family-wise at that point. Just an interesting dynamic I noticed. But then, when Miles was finally on a good path, one away from his father where he wasn't expected to be someone he wasn't, and was able to care about others like Hunter, he found that he still had feelings for Tristan. Though that they originally came at a time of utter chaos, they were very much real and divorced from how he felt about his life at the time. He still had to learn how to have a functioning relationship with someone in season 2 of Next Class, but when he did, he and Tristan grew to be quite a solid unit, not using each other to fill empty spaces in their lives. And unlike Paige, Miles was never bothered by how he felt for Tristan or that another guy liked him. It was never an issue for him because he wasn't attached to a particular image of himself. Really, his whole thing was trying to be Miles in a family that wanted him to be someone else. 
Contrary to Paige, who had her whole life and personhood planned out, Miles preferred to do what felt good to him. Creative writing, anything that would make him forget the pain of being near his dad, and being with Tristan. Yes, they broke up in the end, but not because Miles found out he was straight all along. No, that was firmly not the case. Instead, they broke up because it's kind of what they both needed. Tristan needed to recover without the pressure of trying to keep up with Miles, and Miles needed to be able to follow his passion for writing. They didn't want to say goodbye, but they knew shared feelings couldn't override what they needed. Something any couple, no matter the sexual leanings, could face. And more importantly, Miles' relationship with Tristan didn't quote-unquote turn him gay. He was still into girls as we saw with how he felt about Lola. Yeah, she was a shoulder to lean on when he didn't know if Tristan would ever wake up from his coma, but he also found a connection that they shared. They understood each other, and love bloomed from that shared understanding. Yeah, he decided that he loved Tristan more than Lola and chose to break it off with her, but it wasn't because Miles was now firmly gay and therefore couldn't be into a girl. It wasn't like how Zoe felt in her relationship with Winston where she was using it to lie to herself and everyone else about the sex that she was attracted to. The choice was purely on what his heart said rather than his preferred team. And again, it's important to note that his time with Lola or even Esme didn't come off as putting Miles' sexuality right or as proof that his attraction to boys was temporary. The writing made it very clear of the opposite. Miles being bi wasn't a phase. It's a facet of himself that happened to reveal itself in a time when he was open to just being loved and understood. His affection for Tristan wasn't purely born out of that need for affection and companionship. And this was an important distinction for the Degrassi team to make because, even today, many still treat bisexuality as being gay light, Not wanting to commit to being gay fully, and thus holding on to a semblance of heterosexuality. Assumably because of internalized homophobia, etc, etc. This is the same thinking that leads folks to assert your sexuality basically depends on who you're currently dating, i.e. you must actually be straight if you're in a hetero relationship. That's not how sexuality works, and Miles is a banner example of that. Through him, we see bisexuality isn't just a denial of one's gayness or straightness, it's a refusal to operate on that dichotomy because what they feel inside disagrees with it. We see firsthand that a person can truly be attracted to multiple sexes or genders just as strongly as a gay man could be attracted to another man. And a bisexual person's relationship can look like any other out there. It's not just being really into threesomes or wanting to justify experimentation. It's going off of what feels right, just like with anyone else. Happy belated by Visibility Day. So I mentioned some places that I have a new wig, and I mentioned on Discord that I got a new haircut. Well, this is my hair. It's a lot shorter than I intended it to be, but I've also been rather curious about trying a shorter haircut. At least now I know. I think I'll be happy to grow it out just a little bit. I think it's just a little too short for my taste. And if you want to keep up to date with uh, my hair developments, uh, how many wigs I've got, or I don't know, even the videos I make, check out this Discord in my link where you can find me on my Not Vampire channel to talk to me about said topics, and you'll also find a content stream of the things that I and my friends make. And of course, you can find me on Twitter at NotVampire. Thank you very much for consuming this video, and until next time.